Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good ever time of day you're watching this. Thank you for doing so. I am your host, the founder of 360 Degree Mistress, where the love of Christ must come full circle. And this week, we're back to Matthew. And man, what a great week to get back into Matthew, man, because uh, last week, last time we did Matthew, we finished up Matthew chapter 22. And Matthew chapter 23 is real interesting. I think what happened with this is, is, oh my goodness. Um, so, we know that for the most of the gospel that the scribes and the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day had been unsuccessfully trying to make some false charges, false accusations, false something or other stick to Jesus, and they couldn't. But it, you know, up until now, Jesus really just responded by just giving them the truth about Scripture. In Matthew chapter 23, however, he gives them truth about themselves. Ugh. So if you got your Bibles, um, I'm going to do this in real, really just two sections. Um, because, yeah, it's really only, it's, it, it can only really be truly analyzed in two sections because there's only really two sections to it. And the first section is the first 12 verses, and then the second section is like verses 13 through 36. So I'm actually read the first 12 verses. So if you have your Bibles, pull them out to Matthew chapter 23. We're going to verses 1 through 12, reading out of English Standard Version. And I'll give you a couple seconds to get your Bibles out. Cool. Uh, and here we go. The scripture is as follows. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so do and observe whatever they tell you but not the works they do. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the marketplace, and being called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humble, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So, this is setting the stage for verses 13 through 36. Like, Jesus like, look. I understand that these folk are the religious leaders of the day, but um, they are incredibly unethical and you should not follow their example. You should follow what they teach, just not what they do. And we all we all we often hear about do as I say, don't do as I do, do as I say do. Yeah, Jesus is like <sighs> you really have to apply to these guys because if you because if you because if you do what they do, you're gonna fall away from the kingdom. And Jesus, Jesus' his whole, Jesus' his whole spiel, if you will, the whole spiel of the gospel is to reconcile people to the kingdom of God. Because he's the ransom for the sin, all sins, past, present, and future. So he can't be that and then say, oh, well, you can go be like the scribes and the Pharisees. He has to do the opposite. Boy, does he do the opposite. Oh, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty at all. But let's let's take a look at how not pretty it is. <laughs> Ooh, let's take a look at how not pretty it is. So in verses 13 through probably the end of the, the end of the chapter. I, I was actually talking about this with my uh, with my homeboy a while back. I called it a uh, kingdom clapback. <laughs> you know, the kids got this little term called clapback, and you know, they had the little Thanksgiving memes for with the black families and all the little disrespectful things that the, that the families would be saying. Well, the difference here is that Jesus is responding to disrespect because, I mean, something greater than lies, something greater than lies, something greater than this. Some, the greatest thing is in front of you, and all you're trying to do is discredit it. That's the, I can't think of nothing more disrespectful than that. So 
it is like those memes. This is a bunch of scriptural hard truth because it's hard to swallow truth. Even if the scribes and the Pharisees were open to the truth, which we find out, obviously, that they kind of are not. But even if they were, this would be tough to swallow. I mean, I want you, I want you to think about something real quick before we read at least part of this. We might read it all. Um, think about somebody just listing out every every sin that is in you that kills your authenticity. Every sin that's in you that kills your authenticity. I don't know ten people. I don't know ten people could take that tirade, including genuine believers. Hey, it ain't good. It's good in terms of all things work for work 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 for the work for the betterment, the good of Romans eight twenty eight good. But yeah, um, if if you follow Jesus, this is an ouch moment. If you don't follow Jesus, you probably won't do something to Jesus after that. Oh wait, that's what happened. Scripture verse thirteen, and it is as follows. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut down the can you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces for you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would enter to go in woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte and when he becomes a proselyte you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourselves woe to you blind guys who say if anyone swears by the temple it is nothing but if anyone swears by the gold of the temple he is bound by his oath you blind fools for which is greater the gold of the temple that is made the gold sacred and if you say if anyone swears by the altar it is nothing but if anyone swears by the gift that is on the altar he is bound by the oath you blind men for which is greater the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred so whoever swears by the altar swears by it in everything on it and whoever swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it and anyone and whoever swears by heaven swears by the throne of god and by him who sits upon it i right, i can't do no more i can't do anymore golly i can't do anymore I can't do no i can't do anymore like look this puts me in remembrance of things that, that, that bring my own little authenticity in question. That that stuff, that stuff you didn't struggle with, that stuff you struggling with, all that kind of stuff. Don't get me wrong. Romans 8 once say no condemnation for those in Christ, but God will remind you. <laughs> say God will remind you about how I throw it off you all, especially if you're not examining yourselves. First Corinthians 11, I think it's like 28, 29, somewhere up in there. Also, you can go into um Hebrews 10, 6, and then Hebrews 5, uh, Hebrews 12, 5 through 12. Because he going to whoop you if he love you, and you out of line. He whoop you because you, he love you, and you out of line, because he don't want he don't, he don't want, he don't want to throw you into the fire. That's just how that works. It's just how that works. So, um, yeah, that's just what it is. So, I mean... I mean, Jesus goes on in to tell them that they neglected weighty matters of the law and and they they they're beautiful on the outside, but on the inside they messed up and throwed off and all kind of stuff like that. And they just all kinds of dysfunctional and disorderly and stuff like that. And then he really gets them with 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 coming when he tells them if this is your heritage, this is your heritage, this is your identity. Your identity is with being the Hardy tardy hardy tardy person, the hardy tardy super spiritual leader, and anybody who comes in with some godly stuff that's not in your camp per se, you got to kill him. All the prophets killed him, and you're about to do the same thing to me, but I ain't tripping. That's basically what this is about. That's basically what all the way down to 36 is about. And then, verse 37 through 39, I'm gonna read this one real quick, and then we'll just synergize the whole chapter and close out. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I, would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you are not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's a warning, man. 
Wilkinson. But he been he been giving his warning since like Matthew chapter what three four, way back there. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. This was their last shot. This was their last shot, pretty much. But we we we, we can we can see here that God is hard in their hearts and ain't really about to be no changes in them. So, what can you really say about it? Ain't nothing you can really say about it. So I mean, just. Nothing you can say. It's it's really sad, but it just kind of is what it is. I mean, folk just gonna be who they gonna be, so you just gotta let them be it. And Jesus turns them over. This is this is literally Romans one eighteen through twenty five manifest right here. Jesus laying out all this stuff. All right, I'm a. This is what you're doing. You don't want to repent, so I'm gonna turn you over to it. See your house. Is left to you desolate. Sound like sound like a little reprobate mind action to me. That just me though. So why why this? Because it is reflective of a lot of people who claim God today. No authenticity. No authenticity. Ironic that we're doing Matthew chapter 23 now because Friday features coming up this Friday. We're going to talk about authenticity of church leadership on Friday. You need it. You need to come. You need to come get your popcorn ready for that one. Um, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing in a good friend of mine on that one. And we're going to collaborate on that video. So get your popcorn ready on that one. But just getting back to this here, man. Just why? Why? It's right there in front of them. Why? Just, just why? But Jesus, he's there and he's teaching and he sees all your stuff and he's giving you an opportunity to repent. No, we're going to kill him. What? <laughs> Look, I understand that's what, that was that was what was supposed to happen according to the will of the father. I understand that fully. And I'm thankful for God, for, the, for God, the father orchestrating it the way that he was supposed to. But really, really. We call this a spiritual cognitive dissonance, if you will, that you just hold on to an idea so tight that you're not trying to hit nothing. You're not trying to hit nothing that's alternative to it. A lot of preachers like that today. Not every preacher. I ain't, I ain't trying to attack all preachers. I ain't trying to attack all teachers of, the, of things of scripture. Make sure it's authentic. I tell y'all week in and week out, I'm throwing off as all I does. I tell y'all, we can and we got them thrown off as all our dogs. I'm growing with y'all. Matter of fact, I think one of the last couple of times I did one of these, I messed, I messed around. I messed around and let God work through me. I let God work through me and speak through me. And the words that came out of my mouth through him convicted me. <laughs> so by obeying God, God orchestrated an ouch moment to me through my own mouth. Problem with these scribes and these Pharisees is that they ignoring the ouch moment because the ouch moment is the opportunity to repent, and these folk don't want to do it. What's changed? We gotta tighten up, folk. We gotta tighten up. We got a whole bunch of things coming down the pipe. We don't. We don't know exactly what it's gonna look like. Go check out Revelation for a general idea. But we don't know exactly what it's gonna look like. It's, it's gonna be rough though. Yes, I'm. I'm, I'm a post. Tribulation kind of person because for a reward as big as for a reward, for a reward as big and as eternal as God is all in all, that seems like something you got to go through some things to get. <laughs> That's not something that you can just 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 get to get to. I mean, not earn per se, but to get to. He will endure to the end and be saved from the tribulation, not hell. That that's that's what that looks that's what that little thing. from the tribulation and the in the trials not not the hell. Ephesians one thirteen and fourteen say you're not going to hell, but he will endure to the end will be saved. Says stuff coming down the pipe it's not going to be pretty. Endure to the end you're going to get whisked out of it. Anyway, I'm I'm going off on a whole bunch of tangents. So look, I know Tidbit Tuesdays was late last time. <laughs> it won't happen again. Hopefully. Can't make that call. Can't make that call today, Saturday. We'll, we'll talk about Tidbit Tuesdays when it's Tuesday. Give me my day, my daily bread. Home Day Archives is scheduled to be on time. Friday features on the on the church. Church leadership is coming out at its time. Boy, it's, that one's going to be enjoyable. 
That's going to be enjoyable. With that said, man, just get, folks, just join me in a prayer. Dearly Father, we thank you for being God all by yourself. We thank you for your love and grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your provision, Heavenly Father. We thank you for giving us all of what you what you say for us, Heavenly Father. We thank you for sending your Son, your our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our gold standard of living in our life, Heavenly Father. We thank you for his perfect teaching. We thank you for giving us context on religious leaders that don't have their authenticity straight, Heavenly Father. Giving us religious leaders that don't have their genuine relationship on point with you. Giving us perspective on these religious leaders that just don't have any true substance on the inside that just want to be in appearances and have power and have the have the appearance of godliness but not having any power in it heavenly father we just thank you for that heavenly father we thank you for sending your son for that heavenly father then the father sometimes in the midst of our knowledge heavenly father we want we want to get a little pharisaic and we want to we want to we want to be do do as I say do and don't do as I do kind of deal, but that don't work. You want authenticity through and through and through. You want us to be like Christ, but ain't nobody watching. You want us to be like Christ day in and day out. You want us to be like Christ all the time, and that's just not working like it's supposed to, Heavenly Father. In us, like like we need to, because we need you. We need your Son. We need we need your Holy Spirit to to, to do the work in us, Heavenly Father. And me in particular, Heavenly Father, I have been known to say, you shouldn't do that. And you should do this. Should language is terrible discipleship language. But we still do it because we feel like we have arrived. And Heavenly Father, I want to I ask your forgiveness, Heavenly Father, for feeling like I've arrived. And I want to repent for feeling like I have arrived. Because that's not the way it's supposed to work. It's not the way it's supposed to work. We are never supposed to operate in our spiritual walk like we have arrived. The only arrival, the only arrival is in the new kingdom, in the new heaven, in the new earth, in Revelation 21, chapter 1. When you reconcile your entire body unto you. Not before. There's no arriving before that. Until then, there's work to do, Heavenly Father. Work to do inwardly, work to do outwardly. And Heavenly Father, on this day, I, 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 as I repent for my Pharisaicism, Heavenly Father, I pray that you not turn your face from me, but you rather fill me with your Holy Spirit in such a way that I can be authentic in everything that I do and do the work that you intended for me to do so that I can get a well done, not good and faithful servant on the other side of God is all in all. And I extend this prayer to anybody who may be struggling with their authenticity, Heavenly Father, and anybody who may be struggling with the authenticity of another Heavenly Father, that they recognize that we are all dysfunctional, that we are all disorderly, that we are all on some level disobedient because we all have work to do, inwardly and outwardly, and that they find the forgiveness necessary to forgive that person who isn't showing the authenticity that they need to show, and rather that they could be the example by which that inauthenticity is brought to the person's attention so that they may repent and that a relationship may grow. Because you say in your word that when two or three are gathered in your son's name, that you are present in their midst. So be present in our midst through your son, Jesus Christ. And, I, and, it, and it is in the name of that glorious name of your son, Jesus Christ. And I lift up this prayer and all the folk that may be listening to this. Amen and amen. Got a little preaching. Whoops. So we started with something that the kids say. I'm going to end with something that the kids say. Got a little preachy. Um, got a little preachy. So uh, the kids say this, and I'm going to say it too. Sorry, not sorry. All right. So. As always, I love each and every one of you, and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. And as always, have a great week, folks.